Okay, I'm back. So, what what is happening right now in Ukraine? Um, <laughs> we have Western leaders that hate Russia, that have fomented anti-Russian sentiments for the past 30 years, 30 plus years. I was first-hand knowledge, first-hand witness to the breakup of the Soviet Union. I witnessed in the early 90s our army maneuvers with Russian ex-Soviet soldiers. I witnessed my battalion commander, brigade commanders, hosting Russian commanders in our uh, in the in later on in the 90s in Bosnia, hosting them in our in our talk tactical operations center battalion level, hosting them in there, basically gloating we won the Cold War. I witnessed this stuff firsthand. I was on patrol one time in Bosnia, coming across Russian soldiers in their um, BMP 70s and 80s. I told my guys to stop. I want to talk to these jokers. So it was just a little small trail. We were in our Humvees. They were in their BM or their BTRs, and uh, I stopped them. I stopped our guys. The Russians were on top of their of their armored vehicles. We got off. None of us spoke Russian. None of them spoke English. We just were doing soldier talk, trading with each other. I gave was one guy a hammock. He gave me a hat. We were friendly. Took pictures. Um, the Russian people are very friendly, just like we are. Okay. This conflict is artificially manufactured. It does not need to exist. Vladimir Putin is a very level-headed man, a very, very wise leader. Russia is lucky to have him. We in the West are lucky to have him also. He is stable, he is level-headed, and I've watched him since 1999. I watched the whole thing. You've got to remember, when I went into basic training in 1987, we had a very impressive demonstration in our basic training camp. Two of them actually. One of them was by Colonel Jerry Sage, spoke to us all, telling us about his exploits and his adventures in World War II against the Nazis. And uh, the other, he's now dead, but the other one was this, uh, um, he was an American, but he was a Russian language guy. He was dressed up in a Soviet general's or colonel's uniform, and he had two other guys with him. He was there in full Soviet uniform regalia, and he was speaking in a Russian accent to soldiers. I don't remember what the guy was saying because I was in another unit, but this, this guy was there for something else. And I was just impressed with this. I was like, I've got to know about these Russians. I got to know about these Soviet guys. I got to know about these folks. Because just the year prior, in 1986, I was down in the, Saint, in the, in the West Indies on the island of St. Vincent, doing my job and my duty and my missionary service for the for the Mormon church. And the, um, the Leonid Brezhnev, a cruise ship, came into port, docked in port there in St. Vincent. And I was so impressed with this ship that I, I was, the, you know, I was in charge there of the, of the group of uh, missionaries on St. Vincent. I was so impressed. I said, hey, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go in and we're gonna go on this ship. We're gonna introduce, introduce ourselves and make <clears throat> and make friends with these Soviet sailors. That's exactly what we did do. We're all white. We're all wearing white shirts and ties. So the local St. Vincent police let us in, thinking we were automatically part of the part of the cruise. We didn't have any badges. We didn't have any credentials. We just went right through customs. Boom, boom, boom. I was standing there at the at the at the uh, uh, the, the gangway, the, the the plank, the the steps, portable steps next to this ship and the the guy on top the purser on top he kept coming out looking down at us four missionaries young guys white guys he kept looking at us like what do you guys want what do you guys want going back in coming back out coming back it lasted for about 45 seconds to 90 seconds finally i said fuck it you know let's just go up of course i didn't say that then but i said let's go up so we walked on to soviet territory uninvited okay i got up there to the top me, Tom Bloxham, I, I don't know if Bloxham was there, but I can't remember all the guys that were there. There was four of us there. Um, we went on board the Soviet ship. The guy came out, the person came out, and he spoke English. He said, what do, you, what do you all want? I said, hi, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the Soviet Union. I want to meet Russian people. I think that this Cold War is ridiculous. 
and we need to be friends. Okay? And he goes, well, that's great. What do you do here? And I said, well, we're just missionaries for the Mormon church. He goes, oh, I thought you guys were the local CIA. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not CIA. I promise you that. And he was, oh, thank you so much. And so once the ice was broken, um, you know, he said, well, can I show you around? So he showed us around briefly around the ship. Um, <clears throat> then we exchanged a few small coins, a couple dollar bills. He gave me some Russian uh, rubles and kopecks and stuff, you know, just small trinkets, you know, friendly exchanges. And the one girl that was with him, she spoke no English. Her name was Oxiana. And beautiful girl, beautiful woman. And I, and I looked dead at her, dead at her. And she had, she had very, very nice black hair, very good looking woman, very pretty girl. And I told the guy, I said, if all your women, and I looked at him first, and then I started looking at her. I said, if all your women are this beautiful, I need to move over there and become a Russian, Russian. And he immediately translated that for her, you know, whatever, however Russian sounds, okay? And he said, she's Ukrainian, okay? She's a Ukrainian woman, um, you know, but we're all part of the Soviet Union. He told her that, and once the translation was rendered, she blushed and she just, she just was overcome with emotion, just, just was like, oh, thank you so much. And she reached out and gave me a hug. It was wonderful. It lasted maybe 10 minutes, the whole interaction. And I was like, these people are not our enemies. These people are great. And then when I told the guy when we left, I said, hey, why don't you sail this ship up to the United States and dock in New Jersey or somewhere? And he goes, uh, he started laughing. He said, well, we can't do that right now. And I said, well, wait, next year, President Reagan, he won't be president anymore and we'll have somebody else and maybe we can do it then. And he said, yeah, I know. Hopefully things will go better. So that's where it ended. That's where it went. Shortly after that, I came home and I joined the military and I was a a Russian, a Russian guy. I, I didn't speak the language. I wanted to learn the, the language, but I, I uh, did not pass the language exam. So I ended up, you know, just being a mid-level guy, you know, a, a Soviet guy, analyst. So I was just impressed with these people. Uh, followed them personally and professionally. Back in the late '80s, I would read the Soviet publications called Pravda and Itar Tass, and read this these whoppers that they would put out. I'd go to the library and read this stuff. On my off time at Fort Benning, go to the library and read this junk and laugh at it and just say, wow, these people, these people are putting out some whoppers, some, some doozies, some complete baloney in their, in their media. And I thought, wow, this is just brilliant to read. And then, you know, a couple of years later, Soviet Union fell apart under Gorbachev, blah, blah, blah. And it emerged. And then all this, you know, this animosity and hatred towards the Russian people just started cropping up in our media. In our media, I learned this down in St. Vincent, our media is not at all free, okay? Not once so ever. 1986, I came to this conclusion, listening to my, listening myself to Voice of America and Radio Moscow. I could listen to both of them very, very clearly. And I'd spend hours, hours listening to this stuff as a missionary. I'm supposed to be doing missionary work, but you know what? I, I was thinking ahead. I was thinking, where am I gonna be in six months to a year? So I wanted to know what's going on. And I came to the conclusion right then and there that the media, our media here in America, in the West, is totally corrupt, totally full of, full of shit, okay? And that was in 1986. Since then, they have become much worse. Our media now is exceeding, exceeding the levels of deception and perversion of truths that Pravda and Aitor Tass never could dream of. Never could dream of. Our media today is that way. If you scroll through the channels and watch a particular news story of, of a high global significance, every one of those jokers, every one of them, is reading from the same script, okay? Now, I know this is true because one of my former missionary buddies, his name is Dan Rascone. Dan Rascone, he works for KSL up in Salt Lake City, Utah. He's a big broadcaster. He's a very well-known guy up there, very handsome guy. Dan was a friend of mine on the mission. Okay, we used to go running together. Great guy who actually went on the mission together. We were at the missionary training center together. And uh, we, we haven't really stayed in touch over the years. But Dan Rascone is a big-time journalist. 
he reads off the scripts, okay? I know him. I know he's not going to lie, but I know that you just read what's put in front of you. You're, you're, you have to do what the editor says. You know, if you're, if you're a, uh, a reporter and you write a story about something, guess what? The editor can have control over the final wording, the direction of the respective story. That's, what, that's the way it is. If we refer to our Old Testament, the Bible, Yahweh had complete editorial control over what was put in the Bible. Completely. Even so much, even in the New Testament to some degree. Okay? Yahweh. No friend of man. No friend of mankind. Okay? This guy, that's a complete different subject, reference of my Anunnaki stuff and my studies that way. But I want to talk about, I want to get back to this situation with Russia and Ukraine. Okay? Russia is holding a referendum. Well, actually, uh, the four republics, breakaway republics, part of Ukraine, that are in the east, that speak all Russian. They're all Russian speakers, okay? They're holding referendums this weekend to, to join the Russian Federation, okay? Or stay part of Ukraine. The same thing happened in Crimea in 2014. Crimea was 92, 93% in favor of joining the Russian Federation. Now, I believe that was probably a little bit embellished. I think it was probably more in the 80s. But I think overall it was a very fair and honest, honest election because of the historical situation of Ukraine, what's going on, Russia, what's going on, et cetera, et cetera, and the involvement of the West, us, the West, you know, the, the, the so-called victors of World War II. But the real victors were the Soviet Union. They bore the biggest brunt of that entire mess, okay, that entire war. Um, and I think, let me back up a little bit, I think that my appreciation and um, fascination of the Soviets and the people uh, was born in my sixth grade class with a teacher, her name was Mrs. Miss, Miss Fortin, F-O-R-T-I-N, at uh, Laconia Middle School in Laconia, New Hampshire. Miss Fortin, and we called her, a very disparaging name, we called her Miss Four Tons because she was a fat lady. But she taught us, she said, look, over in the Soviet Union, they have street sweepers and they wash their streets. They keep them clean. She was saying these things that they were doing that we never would do here in America. So as a sixth grader myself, I was impressed with this kind of stuff. I thought, wow, this is impressive. This is really interesting to see how... Um, you know, these enemies, these people over there, the Soviets, behave and how they act. I thought this is really impressive. I thought this is great stuff. So as a sixth grader, I don't know how old a sixth grader is. Uh, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's like 10 years old. So um, 10, maybe 11. So that was an impressive thing to me. So I always remembered it, okay? And watching stuff growing up in the 70s of, you know, the news, Soviets, this and that. You know, it was ingrained in our culture. It was very much ingrained in, into our society. Um, even my, you know, our, our parents' age. You know, people in their 70s and 80s right now grew up in the 50s. Um, duck and cover under the desks. And I've got friends in Russia. I've got this one friend. Um, her name is uh, Olya Grigorievich. Grigorievich. <laughs> I probably didn't say that name right. She lives in St. Petersburg. She's 10 years younger than I, and she remembers these same things. We've shared this numerous stories with each other numerous times about um, things she did as a young girl in her Red Banner Girl Scout stuff and things I did as a Boy Scout in our capitalist society. So we shared notes on this stuff. Brilliant stuff. I mean, we just, I mean, I love talking to her, texting her, talking, sharing these stories. And she told me, she said, Donald, you are a Russian. You really are and it doesn't mean that you can be anybody can be russian you have to have the mentality the heart and the uh stamina and the uh endurance to do that and i thought well, well thank you very much that's a high compliment i thank you right now again oh yeah you'll probably see this video for that compliment so getting back to what's going on today those four republics in ukraine are going to vote to join the russian federation as they should okay Ukraine is going to probably strike with artillery, our artillery, our guns that we gave Ukraine, and that our guys, my peers, 
my fucking peers, former soldier buddies of mine, over there now doing that as advisors, showing them how to run these guns and equipment and bring down fire on these people. That is wrong. I don't agree with that. I think that's wrong. And I think if you're watching this and you're one of those people, you need to you need to mend your ways. You need to mend your ways, find yourself, and stop doing that crap, okay? Stop doing it for a paycheck. Don't do it. So I think what's going to happen is the Ukraine is going to... Is, with <laughs> They're not going to do anything unless these clowns in the West, and I mean that, clowns in the West give them the approval to go ahead and shoot artillery into those uh, Ukrainian citizens voting to join to join Russia okay they're gonna bomb them and what's gonna happen is if it turns out that uh, that they they are they are absorbed into the Russian Federation that means that we are attacking Russia directly watch out Kiev watch out Zelensky Watch out, Alensky. Okay. Watch out. You're going to go down. Ukraine. Ukraine is cannon fodder, and that is the saddest thing ever. Because those Ukrainian people are very good people, on both sides. Okay, both sides. They're people. They are people caught in a bigger battle here with these Western, very small numbers of Western leaders that have great animosity and hatred towards Russia for generational things that were done to, done to their parents and grandparents and even great, great, great grandparents a hundred years ago by Russians, okay? They have this hatred and they are now pulling the levers of power in America. Just the other, just yesterday, Anthony Blinken, that so-called Secretary of State to the United States, was at the UN giving a speech, railing Russia, just slamming them left and right, who was sitting behind him? Victoria Newland. Victoria Newland is a very, very dastardly woman. Very dastardly. Okay, she has no love at all for Russians. She's doing everything to hate them and destroy them. She is behind the Madan in 2014 in Ukraine. She is, 100%. I've been watching this since, well, I've been watching RT, RT, Russia Today, since 2008, 2009 watching this stuff and i even told my late father i said dad you got to watch rt watch it for for a few hours maybe a few days watch their documentaries watch this stuff it is a breath of fresh air to watch rt and listen <coughs> to their um their interpretations of the world events brilliant stuff and i still like rt and I was way ahead of the curb, one of the first Americans that really liked this this kind of programming. And uh, and then I started to slowly realize that the tables it's done a 180. It's now the West that is the biggest propaganda are liars, and it's the Russians that are telling the truth. And if I could go back to myself in 1988 and tell myself that this would be the case in 2022, I would not believe myself. I would not. I would not believe it. Okay. But it's, it's the reality. This is what's facing us. We have forgotten in the West just how dastardly and evil and dangerous for everybody nuclear weapons are. We have our leaders now in the West flirting, flirting with initiating or having a nuclear war. It, and it was under Bill Clinton, his administration, that came out with the doctrine that said the United States can and will absorb a nuclear first strike and reserve the right to retaliate several days later. Okay? There's intention behind everything that happens. There is a dark secret cabal running the world with puppets in front as the, quote, political elected leaders. That's it. And Vladimir Putin himself has said he's going to punch the cabal in the face as long as he's living and he's, they're not going to get the best of Russia. So far, he's doing his job. He's good to his word. Okay? I've watched this unfold very closely firsthand for many years. Now, there's other people out there that are more qualified to speak about this than I. I get it. Okay? But there's, there's a lot of people that are in my circle that have no idea what's going on. And they will defend their own ignorance because they don't know anything else. Or they have a... They have a, a a thing against me they don't want their brother their son 
or this kook that believes in aliens to, to tell them things that they don't necessarily want to hear. That's the reality. The reality is this weekend might be a big deal for the entire world. And I hope and pray that Jesus himself comes back very soon or his emissaries in the, in the, in the likes of Count St. Germain, maybe Joseph Smith, something like that. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I know that this is probably going to happen and I hope it doesn't. I hope we as a, as a, as a society in the West come to our senses and realize we need to trade with the Russians. We need to be friends with them. We need to have cultural exchanges. We need to marry them. They need to marry us. We need to be having communications. We need to learn each other's languages. We need to learn each other's culture. Our culture in the West is very new. Their culture in the East, in Russia, is a thousand years old. They remember stuff, okay? They do. That's why the immigrants who came over here that were against some of the old Soviet policies have such hatred, hatred right now for that, for the Russians. And we're seeing it playing out right now in our media. Our media in the West is not telling the truth. You're being lied to, 100%. I'm telling you the truth. Everything that I know, I'm telling you the truth. We need to stop this. We need to stop it. I hope cool heads prevail this weekend, okay? That's it, cheers.